All right, we're live. Hey, this is Jeremiah and Michaela Harrison again uh, with Liturgy of the Home. And this is Saturday. Uh, we have a little recording in progress sign on our door to try to keep traffic out, and it just fell. But this is Saturday, uh, the last Saturday of the first Pentecost calendar, and so we're coming to uh, make our video walking through the imagery of part two. So a lot of you guys will be uh, putting up your calendars tomorrow, or maybe you already have them up. I know in my office, I've got a set. I've got all four of them up because mm -hmm. I have wall space. But, yes. But uh, so anyway, anything you wanted to add? We've got all four of them up right back there. That's I don't right. know if you can see in the background at all, but that's all four posters for part three. And then part four is getting very close to being finished. I think we have all the design work done. Um, so that's going to be, I think, my favorite set, actually, volume four. Very good. You know, I have a strange feeling that my volume might not be working. I'm really curious about that. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. Well, let's jump in. Okay. Let's jump in. I do a lot more source images for this one, so that's going to take a bit of time. I think I've got like 40 source images. So are you double checking the volume? Yeah. Uh -huh. Good. Well, the, this one, so this calendar is a full calendar. If you remember last calendar, it only covered three weeks of time. You know, we give a two-week spread to uh, the feast and the octave of Pentecost, mm -hmm. which you always do that, right? We mm -hmm. do the same for Easter. Yep. Um, are those the two times you give? That's because of the entire week. Well, I'm thinking Christmas is a is similar, but it, uh, its position. Well, Christmas does not always fall on a Sunday. Those it feasts moves. always fall on Sundays, and so it always lends itself to that kind of layout. And then as we go through the rest of time after Pentecost, the very the rest of the posters, at least for this volume, volume three, are going to be full four-week posters. Mm -hmm. And then when you get into volume four, there's a little more variation too because of all saints and all souls. Yes. So that's going to be a pretty epic spread. That turned out really well. <laughs> well. Let's right. begin. So the first, this next first week coming up, the third Sunday after Pentecost and the week that follows. Okay, so I'll be a little bit redundant because I went over some of this in the first video, but um, just to restate it, especially for those that maybe didn't see the first one, um, for this time after Pentecost, it's spread over seven calendars. And in order to kind of differentiate and mark the different, the progress through that time, uh, we chose to um, change the pillars between each first class feast. So it's like um, almost like that first class feast is setting the stage. It's like the, a new a new scene. So as you notice, we're beginning with these um, these pillars that have like kind of a pearl on them, and that is going back to the first class feast previous, which would be John the Baptist. He is uh, which is today today. Right? <laughs> so, but if you notice this particular decoration, this style of pillar only continues coming up to the Feast of Peter and Paul, and then it changes again because this is a first-class feast. And then only a, a day or two after that, then you have the Feast of the Most Precious Blood. And this is the 1st of July. And this uh, this first-class feast sets this the stage for a very long time. So this particular pillar style, um, which has basically uh, its intertwining grapes is the design. Um, it's it's very detailed, so it might be a little hard to exactly see the grapes. Oh, you see them, but they're yeah, there. There's the leaves in the grapes. The leaves. Um, so I just think this was a really neat way of kind of breaking up this long period of time of time after Pentecost by these first class feasts, and so you're kind of uh, uh, you'll get to kind of live in that in that um, sort of the memory of that for the okay, first class yeah. feast proceeding, um, and then. So I wanted to point that out and then also a reminder that we have now included octave markers. So when you see these little decorative rings around the columns, those indicate that there is an oct there's an octave, a feast being uh, commemorated and an octave is is 8 days. So it's it's the celebration continuing across 8 days. There's a hierarchy of octaves and so we developed uh, different styles to show the different octaves and you should have an insert that came with your calendar that shows which octaves show like what ranking of oct yeah which decoration show which ranking and this you can see it's interesting because you have overlapping right because you have right. two collars here because we have we're still in the octave of uh the sacred heart mm -hmm. and and 
John the, the octave, Baptist. John the Baptist, right? Yes. So, so uh, and then Peter that. and Paul have their own octave. And See, so we end up three for a little bit. Look at this. There's three octave markers that all kind of coincide. And so I just thought this was a really um, beautiful thing to show. It's no longer in the 62. Um, right. They dropped the octave. So, so it, they, that's, they didn't drop them all together, but they many of the octaves were suppressed. So a few, you know, the octave of Christmas still remains, the, uh, you know, the octave of Easter, of Pentecost, right. but a lot of these sort of minor octaves, if you will, like the octaves of St. Peter and Paul, those, you know, there were like 17 or 20 altogether and they shortened them down to like four. So, so part of this project, <clears throat> we are following the fraternity calendar in the main, the main um, images, the, the text at the bottom of each, of each day. But the frame is where we kind of take creative license to pull things from history. And we also bring some of the newer saints into the columns. And so if you see something in the column like that, you know that it's not necessarily technically part of the liturgy um, of the 62 of what the fraternity follows, but um, it's a way for us to kind of show a little more the uh, sort of the breadth and depth yeah. of our history and what's um, going on. So uh, there's a little more background. Also, reminder that now in time after Pentecost, all of the mantles above the weeks are done in an enamel style. So it, it, it does show color, but it's very flat. And so it helps to differentiate visually from the days. So the days are sort of full color, like um, more like, like like real life. And then the enamels is like a material that you would see um Used in Yo, church I art, it's so pretty. It is very beautiful. Imagine mm -hmm. gold with a sort of enamel painted on. Yeah, and uh, part of it differentiates it is the golden lines versus the lines of you know the other art. So, so all right. So I think that's. Oh, and then also reminder that um, foregrounds, meaning like the flowers that are in the front, those are also changing with each first class feast. So beginning now with um, most this month, you'll see the red roses, and that's. Uh, in remembrance of um, our Lord's precious blood. Um, it's red. It will change to yellow roses after the Feast of the Assumption, which is coming up on um, the that third calendar, I believe. Third, I think okay, it's the third so calendar. we'll have red roses for quite a while. Yes, Good yes, start. we will. Um, also in the, uh, in the upper right corner of, sorry, sorry upper left corner. Upper left. <laughs> of, of each of the Sundays, there's a little image there and this was also a new addition beginning with time after Pentecost to show a little something from the Matins readings. So the, uh, as many of you may know, Matt, you know, the, the, uh, the religious, the, the monks and the nuns, the monastics, they do, they have an hour, they pray day and night, seven hours in the day and the once in the night. Matins is the night prayer and it's the longest. And part of Matins is the reading of these lessons, which are uh, taken from the Old Testament. So especially, you know, in the St. Andrew's Missal, Dom Gaspar Lefebvre does the commentary, and he's always weaving the what the church is reading and all of the other readings of the divine office into the Sunday for the benefit of the faithful, because, you know, the faithful don't really get to participate in the monastic right. hours. But yet the liturgy is a whole. It's not just mass on Sunday. It is all of the hours, all of the commentary. I mean, this is there's layer upon layer that has been uh, put on by fathers and by saints of the church over the centuries. And so the liturgy is this big thing and there's all these connections between it and, and, and this calendar project is trying to just hint at that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so part of it is we, uh, we've taken to being able to put an image from what is being read in Matins. And really the way to think of that is, and I talk about this in the insert, in Matins they're going through these Old Testament books and so you can kind of, at least at a reference, you could see that they're reading I believe this is first or second Chronicles. I believe they're reading it's it's in the insert, and they're going to read through that during this week, and then during the next week they will continue on. And so, like it, be, it begins with the story of David. So first is Saul this week, then it's David, particularly you know beginning with his anointing and Samuel. And so from now on, you'll see on the calendars this reference, this hint to the Matins readings, as well as in some of the ferial imagery you'll see further hints. That's why we have David and Goliath here on this second week because mm -hmm. Anne Matins is being read the story of David. So very, very often the readings from mass and the thoughts that are going on during the week are reflecting what's going on in, in the Matins and Liturgy of the Hours. So we just wanted to kind of show that connection a little bit with the imagery. Um, 
Okay, I think that's all the housekeeping before we actually start. Um, that's all part. That's all basically part I of know. the Pentecost calendar is going forward. And really, I, yeah. many of these conventions we're going to try to keep. Yes. Like uh, I'm not sure when we come through to uh, Advent and to we're going to try to some of the things that have been established. We're going to try to keep them through. Right. So the whole, hope the idea is if this project continues to go, it's going to be layer upon layer, mm -hmm. year by year, um, but you know not too much. We, right. We're we, trying to make it more and more clear and kind of refine it as we go along. So and not too much illustrating for her. <laughs> oh my word! The uh, pace of illustration this year has been incredible that she's had to do. So we we, we need to be able to you know. Right now we've been averaging about four images a day. Yeah, that's that's kind of she our. She can't case. keep that up forever. So so the next yeah. iteration it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit less, right? The the layers that go on from here are going to be less. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether it's drastic, but this first year is the most of the contents put on, but then we'll continue to sharpen it year by year. You know how some families like give a year of their life for missionary work. Yeah, I guess that's kind of. So what I've this... given a life a year of my life for missionary work. <laughs> <laughs> missionary work from my home. Yeah, and then, now now it's gonna be part time after this. <laughs> yes, yes. Anyway, I love this project, so it's really a joy to get to work on it. Um, okay, so I guess we'll go right in. Um, so here is the third Sunday after Pentecost. Here is the Good Shepherd um, leaving the ninety nine and going after the one sheep. Um, I will enjoy showing you all the source images that I got this from, but this is fairly uh, self explanatory here with the angels and then our Lord of the sheep. And then that theme is continued across in the mantle. So you see the 99 sheep on the mountainside there. <clears throat> then you see our Lord carrying the lost sheep on his back and returning. Um, so that's why he's facing the direction he is um, because he's returning back to the 99. Um, and then, oh, what did he say? I missed he it. Said, yeah. Thank you. My little kids run to the calendar every day to make sure <laughs> I know what feast it is. Good. That's the idea. No, we're not. Okay. <laughs> What does he say? What does he say? <laughs> Probably because I give him treats. There you go. Yes, that's right. You have well, uh, we, we we have we have bribe we bribe our little one for good behavior at, at low mass. I mean, even in like we we just did the renewal of our home enthronement uh, yesterday, and even in the booklet that's like the form of how to do the home enthronement, it even says in there, make sure to put on a party for the children every year on the anniversary because the kids will look forward to it. <laughs> well, then, this is a caveat too, but you know, as a, as a part of celebrating our faith, the, you know, the, the primacy is to the spiritual is to the liturgy is to the worship of God, but we have to accompany that with things that are beautiful, good and pleasant. And it is important to, mm -hmm. for the kids to build those associations and memories because as children, many of them live more closer to the world, if you will, it's kind of harder to understand these these high and lofty things. So they have to come their first. It's important for us to strive to make their impressions of it enjoyable. And as they grow older, they will already kind of have a love. That love can then become the place where they can go deeper into the actual spiritual realities yeah. or beyond just, you know, physical goods. But we have to have, you know, we have, we have to try to have both and yes. build both. Yes. Um, and then I snuck in over above the visitation, the last part of the gospel where it's referencing um, the woman who's lost the groat and she's trying, she's seeking diligently to find it. So that's her, unfortunately her hand got a little cut off on the, oh, the yeah. thing there, but that's what I actually drew she's, where her hands under, but I think the kids, if they read that, they'll get the idea of what, what she's doing. She's her hands hidden under, she's yeah. looking for her. I love groat. this part of the image here with our Lord and the sort of the stars twinkling in the sky. I don't really yeah. know why, but there's something about that. Yes. And there's the 99 and he goes, he's already, he's already found the one, right? Cause we see here in this image is him seeking and where he found the one yeah. you know all on the side of a cliff all tied up in the brambles yes so just i always, always try to find images to kind of like tell the story with right. the images the kids can kind of see the progression um and then monday we have a fairy a day and the the scroll work says i will i will bless every place in which an image of my heart is exposed and honored that is taken from one of the promises of our lord to those um, who would enthrone him as king of their homes. And um, I chose to depict the Christ child um, with, with the sacred heart. Um, that I'll show you in the source images later, but um, that's a statue that is um, used by Father Kirby uh, from the Silverstream Abbey. Um, they have these statues. It, they were made from an image of the Christ child, but it's, it was particularly used for people who um, 
uh, I guess it was, I don't know if it was in, in ministry or, but they, they, they came to find that people that have been scarred, who had been abused um, as children, um, especially by, by, by men, that they would kind of feel a little bit um, troubled when they would be before an image of, of Jesus because of some bad associations. And so they found that some of these people that were really injured could really pray more openly in front of an image of the Christ child with his heart. And there's a particular name for this one. I'm not remembering what this image is, but I thought to show the children and to show the Christ child, um, the statue there, I just wanted to, to put that imagery in there so the kids could, could see that. And I think it's uh, it's really sweet and beautiful. So you'll see the statue later on that I pulled that from. Um, and then we come to the vigil of Saints Peter and Paul. So here is Peter um, kneeling before our Lord and our Lord is asking him three times, you know, Simon, Peter, do you love me? So the Lord, of course I love you. Um, so there's, he says, feed my sheep. And so it's so beautiful that this is lining up with the gospel, um, you know, of, mm. you know, the 99. Um, so anyway, this is just really sweet with all the sheep imagery. And then you have the first class feast, Saints Peter and Paul. <coughs> uh, there's Peter holding the keys and then Paul with his sword. Um, they're kind of coming out of the frame a little bit because I wanted to make them really big. Um, but anyway, uh, we're very consistent about the colors and the styling. So, you know, they're, uh, Peter, you know, he's, he's appearing there twice. He's got the blue, he's got the blue cloak with the red undergarment. Um, and then you have the commemoration of St. Paul on the other side. This is taken from, uh, the gospel, I believe, where he is preaching, um, to the Gentiles. And they're all kind of, what are you saying? Who is this? And he's preaching to them, Jesus. And you see him, you see his his hand, he's pointing. And what direction is he pointing? He's pointing towards our Lord there on the Feast of the Most Precious Blood. Um, so another first class feast, Most Precious Blood. You have God the Father there holding his son. Um, the blood and the water are streaming out of his side into the chalice. This uh, composition is I stole pretty much almost everything from the monthly dedication that I had done before. It's very fitting. And this is the month of the most precious blood. So I mm -hmm. wanted to show the children the connection there. Right. This is the 1st of July. That's right. This this yep. inaugurates the month dedicated to the precious blood. Yes. Yeah, so a reminder, we're, we're putting in those little scrolls to show mm -hmm. when, when the month changes, because yeah. this is a really different kind of calendar from the one you're probably all used to, where it's by month. This is by season. So we still put in a little marker to show that the month has changed. Um, and then in the, uh, in the column there, that's, uh, Unipro Sarah. Um, and so we have him with his arms reaching up and I was so happy. I found a picture because I just feel like that's so sweet. He's reaching his arms up, uh, in praise and look what all the angels are doing in the picture. They're all raising their arms. So, you know, uh, humans and angels were all meant to praise God together. I thought that was really beautiful how that lined up. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Reminder. It, you'll see in the columns, there are different saints depicted. Um, so reminder, we have commemorations. So that's that little a niche. And that says that they are being commemorated in the context of the liturgy. If it's in the column, it means it's not in the liturgy, strictly speaking, but there's an association with that day. Um, if it is, um, 1800s or later, it's in a frame style, so you can quickly detect newer saints. Uh, Unipro Sarah is, what, 15, hmm. 15, 1600s? So that's why he's a statue in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the column. We'll, we'll, we'll run into one of those later problems. Yes, we will. I think there's actually two on this calendar. Um, so then we go into the visitation. This is second class feast with the arch at the top, and we see uh, Elizabeth and our Blessed Mother uh, greeting because Our Lady is coming to visit her, and John left in her womb. Um, and I that, love this image too. <laughs> really... So you can kind of see I in the source images later, I'll show you uh, the, the inspiration for this picture, not where I took it strictly speaking, but the idea of being able to kind of show the babies kind of glowing a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so you know that they're there, but um, there's John's a little bigger and then there's there's baby Jesus. He's very, very little and there's very a, tiny. There's a hymn, a song, a song for the feast of the birth of St. John, which which in the traditional calendar is celebrated today, yes. although it's on the 24th. And the hymn, the song, there was a line in the song that talked about our Lord in his bridal chamber. 
Yes. <laughs> and, and I just thought, wow. That, um, like a giant coming out to run his course. Or well, well, that, well just, yeah. just the, re the reference to Our Lady's womb as the bridal chamber of our yes, Lord. Yes, yes. So, so sweet. Especially with uh, the, the new... Uh, um, the new decree about you know the protection of the babies and, and uh, um, the court ruling. The yeah, court ruling. I so tell you what, yeah, good news, good news. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm sure be... you all have heard about it. Roe v. Wade overturned. Yes. It's amazing. The but monks, it... the monks all, uh, they they sang the the Te Deum in celebration yesterday. Yes, that so. was okay. So fourth Sunday, continue on fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Yes, this is one of my favorite mantles in a lot of ways. Because, okay, so and in the Matins readings, the reading about David. So we're beginning our readings on David. That's why you see here Samuel anointing David. Yes. So the, the readings of the previous week are Saul and uh, Saul and Samuel, and then now we begin the story of David in, in Matins. Yes. So this is uh, the story of of Peter um, on our Lord, you know, asking him to to cast out, and he's like, "Well, I've already fished all night. I'm not going to find anything." And he does it, and then he catches a great load of fish. So here you see the other two men. That's uh, John and James, and that's their father, Zebedee. So that's why they both have halos. And then Peter's in the boat, and he's kneeling down saying, Lord, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. Um, so the gospel is quoted across, um, but you see there Christ preaching um, to the crowds because that that's what happened first. And you see James and John and Peter all there sitting listening to him and then they're catching the fish in that image and then this is um, them on the shore counting the fish where Christ says come follow me so see how he's pointing to himself and then in the next picture you see them following our Lord and he says I will make you fishers of men and you see Christ pointing to a, sh a ship and it says ecclesia which is Latin for church and so you'll see that image repeated in the week. Yep. Um, the Lord will make them fishers of men. Yes. The first the apostles, the first bishops of the church. So I love, I've used, I'm using that image multiple times throughout the calendar. So here it's on Wednesday and it says uh, Duke and Altum and that's, that's the, represents the church. But I also have it in a few other places. And this, this comes from the liturgy of that Sunday, is that correct? Yep. Also, I feel it's a bit of a shout out to our friends over in uh, Fort Scott, Kansas. And Dan Kerr. Dan Kerr and the folks uh, behind the, you know, the St. Martin's Academy because their motto is Duke and Altum. Yes. So. It's a beautiful one. I love it. And here's a, here's an example of a, of a newer saint commemorated with the uh, sort of the oval picture type image. Right. The the idea is that you can explain to the children like these are people that live in, like in the age of like our grandparents and our great grandparents and great great grandparents, um, because it's like you would hang a family picture on the wall. The, That's Saint Maria Gretti. Saint Maria Gretti. Yeah. Maria. And reminder, yeah. I try if as much as I can to have the saint looking towards the day. Right. The day that. So, so she would on be the on the sixth. You can see her facing. So. Um, and I, enables, and it enables you to put her in which whichever column you need. I right? need flexibility. If I put her on the other side, yeah. she would be blocking the hand of uh, Cyril Methodius. So, yeah. um, so there's Saint uh, Anthony, Mary, Zachariah, and well, but also uh, this one's. Oh, I should talk about that. Right. that this, so this, <laughs> you zoom in on his face. So this is David and Goliath. And we we pulled this from some medieval imagery, but we just love the, the sort of confident, mischievous there is look the on smirk his face. On David's face in the original, I think Michaela mm -hmm. captured it pretty well here too. Yes. But uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And this is a good thing I think for children to look at and see. God is with us. He will ever be with us. And we and we, we got to remember. We, we we need to remember that too. Let us not be afraid. Let us not be afraid. <laughs> Here I have another question. Do you ever pull imagery from the office hymns? The Vespers Pharaoh hymns are kind of surprisingly evocative. Very pretty. Do I pull from um well usually what I'll do is I'll usually first pull from the liturgy of what people will hear, but then um well, those I'll influence go your monthly the... dedications. That's You're, true. On the monthly <laughs> dedications, see she has a series of 12 images, so she still has to build a few. And every image is accompanied by a hymn which comes from the Vespers of that feast. And so many times imagery on those monthly dedications will come right mm -hmm. from that hymn. So, for example, I think this, I have the July one because this the July monthly dedication was is this image here largely. And so 
I th you know, I'm not sure. I actually pulled, I pulled this, the original one in the source images, and I have the hymn with right. the imagery. So right. uh, we can definitely show you that. So that, that'll come at the end. We're going to walk through the source images after we walk through the calendar. Yeah, we definitely so. see this project, like we just been so focused on the calendar, but in as the years go by, um, we definitely want to it, to grow and expand as people want to learn more and make it more accessible. That's like our apostolate is to make the liturgy more accessible for families that are busy and don't have time to sit in church like monks all the time. But, you know, we still want to live as much as we can um, in our in our vocations. So anyway, thank you for pointing that out. I appreciate that. I like this. I love how jam packed. Yeah, I love it too. That's uh yeah, that's why it's hard to fit it's it. It's amazed all. to me sometimes how much she's how she's able to fit so much in. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. This is what my wife's good at. Well, God's helping. So yeah. there's no way yeah. I could do this on my own. Uh okay, so St. Cyril Methodius. I could not find their source image. I definitely pulled this this composition this one, is from the statue. Yeah, there's the this really amazing statue. I could not find over, it. Over in Poland or over in uh Yeah. They're basically these are the apostles to the Slavs to the Slavic nations. And so they are held in very high regard there. Um, they, uh, there was a debate about. They developed um, the language church, church Slavonic, which did not exist. Right. And there was a little bit of, cause people wanted to retain the Latin, but then they were needing, they got dispensation to use it for the, for the Slavs. But then so they have a language, the language that they developed and they, the liturgy was said in this high church Slavonic, and they got a special dispensation to say the liturgy in the Slavonic, not in Latin. Isn't that so interesting? it's interesting. It's a, it's. But if you research it, it's not quite vernacular. Like right. the Slavonic used in the liturgy was not the same you would hear on the streets. It right. was a high. It was a, f a more formalized thing. So there still was a a hierarchy. Right? You know, I'm talking. This it's very interesting on, history. So right, right. There's wanna... still there still is a hierarchy within language, which which I think is proper. You see that in worship all throughout Christian history. So. Yes. Um, and then you have St. Elizabeth of Portugal, and she looks very similar to St. Elizabeth of Hungary, who will come up later. Um, but uh, And they were actually relatives to each other. So I, for, I forget exactly the relationship, which one was which, but uh, I believe Elizabeth of Hung. Uh, I'm not going to say because I'm going to probably say it wrong. <laughs> but anyway, they were relatives. Uh, and so a lot of the imagery they were getting, it was like, wait, I can't tell which one this is because they were so similar. Well, and remember one of the goals of our, of these calendars, when you have them up as I'm, as we're hoping that this will spur you on to do research, to look right. up these saints, to read their biographies, to find uh cause there's only so much we can pack here. And <laughs> it's just meant to be an enticement to want to jump into the liturgy of the church and to, yes. to go through this treasure house. Yes. So, okay. So then our lady on Saturday, um, as you can see, the corners have the, the fleur de lis design, and we're using this on, we're going to use this from now on for all um, uh, fourth class, Our Lady on Saturdays, it'll have this particular design. So kids can quickly recognize that this is um, is Our Lady on Saturday, and it's especially uh, dedicated to her. So um, a lot of times I, I, I have a little bit of license as to what image of Our Lady I'm going to put there. Sometimes I'll put a symbol. Sometimes I'll look up if there's any sort of history to that day with a particular aspect of Our Lady. So on this day, I chose to show um, Our Lady. Um, I think this there's, there's different titles with this one. But basically, this idea of her cloak being like a net and she's catching all these souls, I thought was really unique because of what the theme of the whole week is with with Jesus telling mm. the apostles they'll be fishers of men. And so then this is our lady with all of these souls under That's her cloak. Right. Like, she, right. like she's participating in the salvation of, of souls like that. So yep. um, that's why there's that image of her there. All right. I think that's it for uh, that week. And, uh, week three. And right. Now we are reading of David and Saul in the Matins readings. Last week we really were introduced to David and Samuel. But now we're reading particularly of the uh, – the antagonism between David and Saul, and you'll see allusions to that uh, in the uh, on, a, on the Ferial Day. Yes. This so, um, in this this uh, this gospel on this day is Christ is telling um, that we must leave our gifts at the altar and go be reconciled with our brethren. Um, and so, uh, I developed this um, this way of showing 
when Christ is telling us something, I show him talking and then there's like clouds and then there's the, what he's talking about in the background. So here you see the two being reconciled kind of in the background and he's in the foreground with um, the children and person sitting at his feet. And so I'm using this consistently now um, through this whole time after Pentecost. You can quickly see if it's a parable or if it's like an event like Christ is healing someone, then you don't see this two different scenes. So uh, right. I really like right. this. I feel like it's really clear. When we did Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, they differentiated um, between parables and what actually happened historically by, by using either two-dimensional objects or three-dimensional objects. So if it, was a, if it was a parable, they had little like figurines that were flat um, on little stands, and that was for the parables. And if it was a, something that actually happened, then they had a three-dimensional character. And I just thought it was so smart because kids sometimes get confused. And so this way of showing the clouds is a way, you know, visually for the kids to see that this is a parable Jesus is telling. Um, I love what you have for the mantle this week. Yes. One of my favorites. So the gospel is continued across, yeah. but we wanted to show – this is an example. This is an example of what the what the heart of the gospel is about. Um, we live by a monastery, so we chose to use two monks. Um, particularly, the reason why I chose monks as opposed to children having to reconcile <laughs> is because the monks have a unique sign of peace that is just really beautiful. Um, and so I basically wanted to kind of do the backstory leading up to that sign. Can you scroll over a little bit more so they could see? Yeah, well, you want to read the stories okay. here. You see, there's a monk who's busy cleaning cleaning the area and another monk uh was it obliviously walking through he's got mud all over his shoes and so he's he's zooming on their faces yeah sorry you he's see not very faces. pleased with this yes <laughs> but uh they each of them in prayer and you know the monk who has the anger in his heart he's convicted of this and then this is this is what well you're the other about. one was also not doing good because he was being careless yeah so being careless, he right. also needs to kind of be reconciled as well so sometimes it's usually both sides have some sort of fault. <laughs> right, right. They could, they recognize their faults here, each of them, and then they are reconciled. And then you were saying this, so this, the sign of, this is the sign of peace that the monks give to each other um, at um, dur during the mass, and um, it comes from the the priest of the altar goes to um, the uh, which which one usually does one he gives it to the. One of the uh, servers, one of the, the altar servers. Right. And then and then that is then given each. And so, so the, the priest, monks the priest gives the sign of peace to to the I think the MC. And then the MC himself goes to either and the other does, servers and then he goes then he goes to the monks. And then the monks then he teach in in turn pass it down and it's done in this particular way. And um I just think for children when they see that it's helpful to have a, a re explanation for why they're doing that. What, what does that signify? And it signifies that, you know, they are being reconciled. Um, so, oh, and then the pillar. So it, it's a little hard to see, but basically oh, yeah. on the columns on the one side, there's the thorns, which are the, the pains, the sufferings and the, um, the conflicts. And then you see the hand of God there in the clouds, uh, it bestowing peace and then on the other side the columns have now changed from the thorns have uh, blossomed into flowers and then you see the two monks crossing the bridge into the heavenly city and then i the trinity is here because the trinity is the ultimate example of that unity and reconciliation like they're they're a community com the, they're, they're just a perfect community and so when we yeah. do this and we imitate then we we join with that right so so it's a journey Yes, I, just, I love I love this journey. The first, the monks. There's sort of the offense. There's the conviction of the offense. Then there's coming together, the giving apologies, the receiving, and then once again, the two of them can continue their journey to heaven. Uh, can you zoom in on that little um, the little triangle thing between the Father and Son, Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. So this is pretty cool. So this the the initials there. F is for Filius. P is for pater okay. and S is for spiritus. spiritus. And then the D in the middle is for Deus, which is God. Right. So the three are distinct persons in one God. Right. I just thought that was a beautiful image. I really liked it. And so uh, one one I saw one interesting formulation of it where in this middle area mm -hmm. they have word the writ the word the written words is not, is not, is not. So the 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 uh, the son is not the father, the father is not the spirit. But then they have is 
all three are God. Together, right. So each of the persons is distinct, but all three together, I thought, oh, so I think that this image is kind of like an, 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 an image to, to try to show just a tiny sliver of what the Trinity is. Yes. It's about all you can uh -huh. show is the tiniest sliver. <laughs> and then God the Father is holding the ball, which represents the world, the, the earth. And then Christ is holding the book, which is the word, because he, he is the word, the logos. So. Yeah. That, that's this mantle. Isn't that, isn't that? Yes. Okay. So this is a uh, Monday is a fairy a day. It's a, with a commemoration of St. Pius the first. He's a martyr. Cause you see the palm. Um, <clears throat> and he's a Pope obviously uh, with the, the papal tiara there. Um, he is very hard to find pictures of the early popes. I was I always struggled, but anyway, I was able to find some stuff, but I was reading up that his, one of the things he's particularly known for is, is that he put in place very strict rules about how the most precious blood was to be handled to prevent any kind of sacrilege. And so I pulled, I put a picture of the chalice with drops of precious blood going into it. And that's the same chalice that is seen at the top of the calendar for mm, the feast, the most the precious, the blood. precious blood here. So it's just a smaller version yes. of it. So same chalice. I just hoping the kids can make that connection in this month of the most precious blood, we have a Pope who is particularly known for safeguarding it. So that's special. And with, with the red roses there, it's perfect. Um, okay. So then Tuesday, St. John Gilbert with uh, commemorations of Saints Nabor and Felix. Um, St. John Gilbert was um, uh, a, a man who his brother was, was, was murdered and he spent much of his life wanting to get back at, take revenge on his brother's life. And when he finally had the opportunity to do so, um, so he, he came, he came in contact or he met the man who had killed his brother. Right. And right before he was going to slay him, he um, saw Jesus on the cross and was, I forget if there were words or what, but he, he was um, converted and he forgave the man who had, Oh, the man called out for mercy. Right. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and so he was merciful. And then after that, he he went on to become a great saint. But that's why the man in the picture who's point, he has his hand up. That's like he's asking for mercy and he's pointing towards the crucifix. He's saying, for the love of God, have mercy. And there's St. John Goldberg looking up and embracing him. And so it's a beautiful saint feast to have during this week with this, you know, Sunday's reading. So um, I love when these connections happen. This won't happen other years because other years, his feast day is not going to be with this Sunday. So each year I'm going to have to retweak these kinds of things, but that's a beautiful connection. That's special for this year. And then you have um, saints uh, Louis and Zelie Martin in the, um, in the yep. column there. So there, <laughs> I believe on the 12th, but I couldn't really make them both looking because that's no, not the image. Yeah. So sorry about that. But you see, you see uh, St. Louis eyes. Yeah. They're, they're, right. they're, they're, they're kind of looking. Yeah. They're so both small. looking that way. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so now we have another fairy day with no commemoration. So this is an image taken from Matins, and this is um, David Amen. in the cave saying, you know, you know, God has delivered you into my hands. Like David could have have killed Saul, who was trying to kill him, but he, he um, not, spared his life. He did not render evil for evil, evil, but <laughs> contrary wise a blessing, which comes yes. from the liturgy. Yes, so this is really really perfect. Yes, uh, that image. Um, okay, so Bonaventure. Oh, I love this picture. Okay, so this is St. Bonaventure, who was a disciple of St. Francis of CC. And so that's why you see St. Francis there. And St. Francis is holding uh, the church because, you know, he was uh, told God, God told Francis, rebuild my church. So he's holding a church. And then St. Bonaventure is holding a scroll that says, Oh, Bonaventura. Because as it's told, St. Francis, when he saw St. Bonaventure as a baby or as a child, is very young, God revealed to St. Francis what great and beautiful things St. Bonaventure was going to do. And so he said, he said, oh, Bonaventure, which means, oh, good journey, basically. Like he could see this, this young child's life ahead of him. And so he got the name from St. Francis, essentially. Um so also, isn't it St. Bonaventure and St. Thomas Aquinas who, who were both asked to write uh, write the a prayer for the Blessed Sacrament? <laughs> Just like, sorry. Yeah, I know St. Thomas was. I believe St. Bonaventure was the other one. I hope I'm not wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure. So and so both the Pope asked both of them to write a, 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 a song or a prayer 
for a, uh, for in for benediction and blessed sacrament, I think. And when Bonaventure read St. Thomas's hymn, he took his hymn and ripped it up because <laughs> St. Thomas is so good. But basically, St. Bonaventure wrote so beautifully. Like he was wonderful. So it wasn't because it was so bad, it was just because St. Thomas Aquinas was so good. Um, but anyway, so there that, that's a little story. Um, it's nice to see like rivalries between the saints. Yes. They teach us how such things are to be. How are we to strive with each other in holiness and love? You know, yeah. a, 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 truly a friendly competition, but very yeah. fear, you know, competition, no less. Um, okay. And then you have St. Kateri uh, right there. Mm -hmm. Very discreetly. She's very much like an Indian there in the column. <laughs> there. You almost miss her because she's so like discreet there okay so then we have king uh saint henry the second hit there uh hope the boys will enjoy that sword and that strong stance um yeah those, those very really, regal it's kind of funny some of my favorite characters throughout the calendar are the various kings and princes that are depicted yeah whereas later on i think on another spread you have another king a hungarian oh yes yeah, so yeah. Him. yeah so <laughs> All right, and then we come to Our Lady on Saturday, and then this is Our Lady of Mount Carmel is who the picture is, and I'm pretty sure that that is the, <coughs> sorry, that is July 16th. I'm trying to remember so if that, yeah, I'm, that, I think I chose that because it is like historically the date. It's not technically commemorated on the count on, in the liturgy. Um but, like, I'll double check that later. It's not but so this one. Well, you, you believe that that tra traditionally before was the 16th of, of I July? I am pretty sure. Oh, man, I, wish I, could, I don't have all my references here. But if I remember correctly. Someone could look us up and Sorry. correct us on that one. <laughs> yes. All right, moving but on. It is, but that, that, that event, that feast inspired this image for Our Lady on Saturday yeah. on this day. So. Okay. All right, and that's why the... The frame there too has the floor releases. Because right. it's, it's a Saturday given to our lady. And right. now we come to the last week of this calendar. And we read in Matins, uh, the readings continue of David, but at this point we're at David's remorse after yes. his sin with Bathsheba and judgment from the Lord. Yes. It's always uh, a little tricky trying to figure out the right um, imagery to help children, you know, see what's going on and i have so little space there i have to really be creative on how to find the right composition it's just, so it's that an image icon. it's kind of an icon of mm -hmm. what was being read there in that week mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh the sixth sunday after pentecost is the feeding of the five thousand. you see the apostles there helping to distribute the loaves there's saint john saint peter um and our lord um and then sort of tucked down there at the bottom is St. Alexius of Rome because he would be the saint on this on day this except day. for... So his feast day is the 17th of July? Yeah, he was superseded. By, by <laughs> Sunday? Yes, I'm still trying to make sure I got Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Um, uh, la, 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 la. Okay, so the mantle is... When I was coming up with the imagery for the mantle, the... As many of you know, the feeding of the 5,000 is a representation of the Eucharist and the, the multiplication of the loaves. And so in the mantle imagery, I have in the very center Christ with his 12 disciples at the Last Supper. That was the first mass. And then going off to the left, you see Christ giving communion, giving the Eucharist to his, his apostles. And then... Going farther to the left, you see the apostles now giving communion to the early Christians. So that's kind of what's going on to the left. And then when you go up over to the right, you see Christ continuing by his you know power and through grace his priests. through his priest to give communion to each of the Christians through all the centuries. And so the the that this mantle kind of is is going out on either side from from that first mass. And then running through on the ribbon are the words from that liturgy of this story. Okay. Or it is a prefigurement of all of this. Yes. Yes. All the all the imagery you would see. From the the in the mass there you see a little a little boy and a little girl receiving their first communion. So that's ah, why she's wearing the white dress. That. So it's like their first time receiving. Like that was the apostles' first time receiving 
Right. That was fun. Yeah, July 16th is popularly associated with the devotion of the scapular. So okay. that is why Very I did good. that. Just perfect, perfect. It's lined up so lovely so you can do Our Lady on Saturday to that image. Yes. Beautiful. Um, okay, then we have three saints all in a row, St. Camillus, sorry, St. Camillus, St. Vincent, and St. Jerome. And all three of them are known for their care of the poor. And so I just think it's so neat that here you see all three of them, they're, they're, each one is doing something slightly different, but um, they're kind of all clustered together. I just right. noticed but they, that. But, but also just they're occurring, at least this time, on this week of the reading of the feeding of the 5,000, yes. where our Lord <laughs> feeds, feeds the world. Feeds, you know, feeds yes. them and then feeds all of us with his body and blood. And how interesting all three saints sort of following that. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. So then Saint Symphorosa and her seven sons. This is really similar to um, the Maccabees, the, the mother mm. in the Maccabees this year. Her seven sons died. And then there's another place in the liturgical year later where there is, um, oh, I forget her name. There's another mother with seven sons who also will come to it if it's later. Yeah, yeah, I know, but but there's some debate if possibly they were the same one or it's just just oh, two. But in the other <laughs> one, the mother's not commemorated with the children. <laughs> the children have their own feast day, and the mother has her feast day later because she died not the same time. It was mm. later. Very interesting. I just just seeing these patterns emerging. Um, you have Saint Margaret there stepping on uh, on the dragon. Um, I just thought that was a pretty <clears throat> for any girls out there that want to see some strong female saints. Mm -hmm. Here's a very That's strong what you're female supposed to do saint. The dragons. That's right. <laughs> you can see a dragon. He's showed them the cross. <laughs> All right. Um, then over here, uh, Saint Proxades. I'll talk about her first because mm. if you all remember, uh, I forget which calendar it was. There's so many images now. She was the sister of uh, 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 the other saint. And the, the, I'm not remembering now. It's so horrible. <laughs> um, yeah, but basically they're both holding the same thing because these two sisters will go out and dab up the blood of the martyrs. And so the other one, if I go find her. Um, well, you kids find her. So is it? you'll see her. She's holding like a cloth or a sponge using – she's dabbing up the blood of the martyrs. Yeah. So, All right. Proxies. Look for her. Look for her on the – this is her. good. you got to find her on the, on the previous <laughs> calendar. Um, there are so many cool saints. It's just, it's just amazing. And so when, they, when you I find her, her this, this, uh, this other, she's the sister of St. Praxedes. Is that right? Yeah. I must look up St. Praxedes. Okay. It'll show me. Um, it's so hard because, you know, when you're a mom, you get that mommy brain. And I'm like, I really remember my own kids' names sometimes. And I'm trying to remember the saints' names. Um, okay. Here's St. Saint, Saint Prudencia. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's right. I remember St. Prudencia. So if the kids There's still, commemoration, though, if the kids still have the other, the other calendar where she is, then um, these two are sisters. They're both Saints they're both Saints. holding the same thing. So I right. wanted to see that that connection. Okay, Saint Lawrence Lawrence of Brindisi. He is. There's some really cool images I'll show you of him leading the charge in a battle against the Muslims. Um, he's Franciscan, as you could tell by his habit. Um, <clears throat> but it worked out well to have him holding the the cross there, kind of going into the frame and then you have saint mary magdalene on the next day in the cave where she spent the remainder of her life fasting and praying and she's looking up towards the cross so i love it when the saints sort of <coughs> i call them liturgically your buddies they're kind of side by side and they share together in that love for faith um you see saint mary magdalene has again her mm, her vessel same. her vessel and uh, was... next to her straw mat um, yeah, she has that in the, the Lent calendar. She has that same vessel that she used to anoint her Lord. And then the skull is there because she was uh, always uh, contemplating death and preparing for death. Um, Memento Mori. Mm -hmm. Remember, death, we are all, that's where we're all headed. Yes. This whole life is to prepare for, to, to do all that we can to prepare for a good and holy death. And I've been thinking about that a lot because the whole month of November is all about the souls, the holy souls and in purgatory. And that's what I've been doing. So I've been thinking a lot about well, that. Just <laughs> wait until you all see volume four. Oh, my word. <laughs> that's all I can just say about that. Yeah. Um, uh, and okay. the last at the end of this calendar on this Saturday, yes. St. Apollinaris. The, I, there's a story. I remember reading the story about St. Peter because he was, St. Apollinaris was um, commissioned by St. Peter to go out 
to Ravenna, I believe it was. And so, you know, St. Apollinaris was with, with Peter for a long time and he was being trained. And one day Peter says something effective. All right, what are you doing here? Take up and go. And he, he blesses him. He says, go, go forth, <laughs> go to Ravenna. And that's just St. Apollinaris. Yes, sir. And he went to Ravenna. And, yeah. and I believe that's where he, he lived and died and, and converted many Christians there. Yes. So that's why you see Peter, he's pointing, but he's also holding the keys to help yep. the kids identify who he is. <coughs> Sorry, I'm covering my cold. I preach Christ to so the nations. We've got to recover that uh, that kind of zeal, you know, for the Lord, for his house, for the faith, for the liturgy. Yes. Well, then, I mean, that's in a sense, that's why you're doing this project. This is a little, a little part you're trying to play. We're trying to play in helping folks rediscover and uh, rekindle a, a love for the faith. Yes. So that brings us to the end of this calendar. I don't know if there's, if there's I was going to go on into the images unless you well, want to We could to just say. go. Yeah, there's quite a few images. Yes, so we've right. already, sorry, we're so long-winded. We're already at 50 minutes. Oh, well, well quick thing, quick note. Uh, many of you will probably, you know, those of you who could stay with us, thank you so much for, but um, <coughs> about the companion guide, I've gotten a couple of questions. You know, we I, I've been putting out this little companion guide booklet on the website, a PDF, usually about 20 or 30 pages each week. Uh, and may, some of you have noticed that it's, it's ended. And I put out an email to everybody describing that, but in case you missed that, um, essentially Dom Garanger wrote the liturgical year, but he didn't finish it. Uh, he got to all the way to Pentecost before he had when he, he passed away. So it was of his old age. The work was continued by a monk, by one of his monks, and they wrote well, but they wrote much, much longer. And so I'm not able to do the abridgment like I was before. So in, in order to continue, I mean, that would be it would be like six to eight pages per day. Yeah, it was so just too big. It's really it's just too big. I I can't continue it now. I uh, I do I do still believe that to abridge the liturgical year really might be a good thing to make. It's a fifteen volume set. It's huge, but mm -hmm. I mean I've you know I believe you know Dom Garanger and to to read the liturgical year in a sense is to reclaim you know a large portion of the treasure house of what has been lost. So, but at least if, uh, I don't know, God willing, maybe some someday we could do a project where I'm actually able to put a series of seven little booklets out or to sort of abridge the entire thing. Mm -hmm. But it's going to take a lot of work. <clears throat> so okay. I don't know if God wants us to do that or not. But so for now, I essentially, I've put out our little companion booklets of all the writings of Dom Guillaume which go all the way up to Pentecost. But it's still there online. If you go to Census Fidelium, mm -hmm. the website, you know, many of you probably know the YouTube channel, but there's a website for them too, censusfidelium.com or .net. Mm -hmm. And uh, go to the website, you'll look for calendar and click calendar and you'll see an image of a monk. That's Don Guernsey, click on his image. And then he has Steve Cunningham. He's put up pretty much the entire liturgical year there. Um, and so you can continue to read. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a really good way, really good place to see biographies of the saints. Um, so anyway, I wanted to put that in there in between as we jump to the images. All right. So, all right. All right. Isn't that beautiful? Like a beautiful piece of art. No, <laughs> I just put this These here. The roses. Just, right? just to show. Yes. So there's the red <laughs> roses. So a lot of times when I'm, people ask, well, how do you, how do you do all this? Where does it come from? Like sometimes I literally just grab a picture like right. that and then I use it to, to, to do the art. So just wanted to put that in for a little ha ha. <laughs> okay. Moving on to more fine works of art. <coughs> Here is, this is the image you got for the first Sunday. <coughs> yeah, sorry. My goodness. Go tickle my throat. Sorry. We are talking a lot. We usually don't talk quite this much for this long. So beautiful image. Our Lord on the cliffside reaching for the sheep, us, all of us. Yes. Plucking us out before the eagles can get us. <laughs> yes. And then here we have. This is where I pulled the angels from. Oh, that's right. So, so when you look at these two images here, what, what you have, what you have, is a combination. For the angels are, are watching as our Lord is plucking us from the abyss. This is taken from Dante's um, Paradiso or something, mm. probably. Right, right. This so. looks like probably, uh, I think it's Beatrice you know, speaking with Dante. I think. Okay. So, and here's the statue that you spoke of. Yes. The child Jesus. I really like the statue. I think it's beautiful. Oh, Jesus. Looks uh, it's German, I believe, right? I think Duke so. Honey, I don't know. speak German. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Uh, and then here we have... Peter with the sheep. Peter with the sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. This came from that uh, 
-hmm. that day of the first this week. This is a mosaic. One. Oh, to, you know, we can't actually visit the structures where I'm going to be, you know, but pictures exist online of all of this stuff. So really it's been neat how we're pulling, she's able to pull and, and, and make this art, shape it, crafting it after all of the great architecture and imagery of, you know, medieval Europe and stuff without even going there because this stuff is available online. So it's really quite a treasure. If you're going to use the internet, you might as well use it for something good. Yeah. <laughs> So you're Saints Peter and Paul, yep. right? This mm -hmm. is for the feast and stained glass windows. Yep. Saints Peter and Paul. I had to squish them a lot closer yes, together. Yes, <laughs> in order to fit them in there. Yes. And then here we have, uh, this is the commemoration of St. Paul. Yep. Right? Yep. No, it's not a commemoration. It's actually his, it's a It's a feast. Right, right. But the, the feast day that follows. Right. Was oh, it, you, said, you said commemoration. Well, no, yeah. This is the, the commemoration of St. Paul. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm wrong. Sorry. That's what it's called. That's right. It's not a commemoration in the sense of the speaking. niche. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then we have here. This is some of where you got the inspiration for the precious blood. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay, I see the father's garments. I've seen other depictions of the father like this, but I think this is where you uniquely got the garments. Yeah. For. And then we have Saint John the Baptist, right? No, that. I see the camel's hair, or do you see uh, the hair? I'm, the other one, St. John the Baptist, because he's, oh, the, he, he's he, the forerunner. He hair this, too. I believe, is um, Mary Magdalene a lot of times it shows way, or St. – it should be Mary Magdalene, but also St. Mary, because she was at the foot of the cross probably, right. I'm okay. guessing. St. <coughs> Mary of Egypt is also shown that way sometimes. And here? Um, Medieval. Yeah, remember, medieval imagery. Do I don't this? remember why this one's here. I'm sorry. So this one might have accidentally snuck snuck its way in. Well, I tell you what, it gives you. I, I love the medieval imagery. It gives you. I love being able to show this because it gives you a sense. There's just a character about the medievals, the way they drew their faces and everything. I know. It's really. And then here, here's the monthly dedication image that Michaela made for the month of July, for the most precious blood. So this is an image. You know, the idea is we have these available on our website. We have a little membership. Um, you know, for some of you know, some of you may be members, but you, you join the membership for, um, if you have the Sophia calendars, it's just like $5 and 35 cents a month. And, and we have coloring pages for every saint's feast day and all the monthly dedications. Mm -hmm. The idea is you print this out. This is on a normal eight and a half by sheet, eight and a half by 11, and, uh, put this on display along with the hymn, which comes from Vespers of that feast. It's just a great thing to have on display for each month. So we're, you know, when this, this, you you still have three more to go. September, right. October, November so not, have not been designed yet. There will be an image pack, if you will, of all 12. Yeah. And then you could, these are fully reusable. You can just you continue, print them on nice cardstock and you can use them every year. But, you know, we're probably going to be sharpening these as time goes on too. Over yes, the next are. few years, they're going to get, Makeda and the girls are going to go over it again. This and is really, the first pass. Yeah, first pass. So, um, but uh, here, this is a compilation page. image, but this is, you see the, the father. Uh, you know, giving us his son. Um, and then you have Our Lady, St. Joseph, the saints around, and then the angels there praising and adoring, and then the the mass below and the people. So it's kind of a, a lot going on okay. <laughs> there. So here we have, this is uh, the saint you had in the... St. Nipro Serra. So this yes, is him, right. kind Here's of, I thought. I thought oh, this statue. is perfect. He was a great saint. He he. Uh, I'm great from saint California. I'm from California originally. It's been like 18 years since I lived there. Right. But um, but uh, we went to all his missions. We went to all all the missions right. all the way up the coast as a field trip when California I was a teenager. California needs his prayers now. Yes, it uh, is. And then here is for the the chalice. The chalice used both in the monthly dedication, but also you see of the Pope. The uh, the Pope is commemorated. Actually, sorry. So this one's not. It, this one is just in the calendar, not in the monthly dedication. The monthly dedication one's a much smaller chalice. Oh, okay. I used a different chalice that was bigger, and I used this one to design the one for the calendar, so it was a little more prominent. It's a beautiful chalice. But yeah, I thought you like seeing all that all that detail with the twelve apostles there. That's right. And then here, here's the okay. So this, this is inspiration. the inspiration. I didn't actually pull the composition, but as far as this idea, this is Braddy. Brad, Braddy Barth, I believe, is is the artist's name, and she has a really sweet style. Uh, she's Norwegian or like 
she kind of has almost like the Dutch, a little bit like the, I don't know. It's just really lovely. It's kind of semi-iconic, but not exactly. But I just liked it. I thought the kids would, would relate to it. The visitation. And here, often. This is, this is the, a, the Good Shepherd. Right. One. Right. Do you, have you, did you look into the details, though? There's several details. I can see the ram sort of following, like running after him, it seems. Yeah. And the people in the background. I really one. just stole it for his composition of carrying, yeah. <laughs> carrying, the, carrying the sheep. Yes. But uh, this artist, I forgot remember his name. I pull from him a lot. He is really yeah, I've good. Seen, I've seen, yeah. I'm not remembering his name off the top of my head right now. But anyway, that's where I got that. And then and here's, here's the woman who is searching through the house, the lost groat. Same artist, actually. Same artist as the previous one? Yep. Ah. I pull I kind of recognize boy. He's very, very good with colors and light he is. Boy, he really can feel the darkness. You know, the I believe a lot of his paintings were stolen. I think I remember reading about, about oh, right. on this one. Here's an example. These are some early um, martyrs. These ones were used in one of the commemorations. So I found this picture, and then I kind of shrug it down and squeezed them and put them in one of the little commemoration slots. Um, and here is where you got uh, the sheep for, yes. this, for the 99, right, yes. that were left behind? Yes, on the hillside. On the hillside. Although in your image, they're on the green pastures, a little, little greener than this. Yeah. That's, I think they're happier sheep than here. There seems yeah. to be pretty, uh, <laughs> not a lot, not a lot to eat here. And this is... Saul. This is Saul. So this, this was what you, I. This is what where you get the composition for the image and the of Matins in the top left corner of that week. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll try to find the artist name later. And here. So this, this is, is the the, uh, the gospel of the um, with Peter in the boat, but I didn't oh, want to use our Lord, so I just used the foreground yeah. here, and I changed some of the men to make it you know Peter, James, and John, and their father Zebedee. Pulling up the fish. So I think it's the next one, maybe is the. But this is. Yeah, yeah it is. So I use this one for Peter and our Lord. That composition. Uh, I didn't care as much for the way they show James and John. <laughs> it was like they don't quite look like their brothers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, but I thought our Lord's posturing was very good in this one. I liked Peter's posture. So I just kind of took what I liked from one and took what I liked from another one and put them together. And here is Samuel anointing David. Mm -hmm. You see in the caption, which was served as the model for the, um, that Matson's mm -hmm. image. And here is the model would you see in David and Goliath. And you see here that little smirk. <laughs> yes. Who, uh, what is it? What is it? David said, Oh, I don't remember exactly, but you know, some of the effect of who dares, you know, insult, insult, our Lord. insult the living God. I will give answer to the man. And well, so he did. So he did. May the Lord help us to uh, become bold in our defense of, of all that is true, good, and beautiful. Yes. In these days where we seem to be surrounded by cowards. Yeah. Help us, Lord, not to be. In every age, God raises up saints. Yep. And here, this is actually a fuller version of that same picture, yeah. telling the whole story, his defeat of Goliath, and he uses his own sword to cut off his head. Yes. So, I, uh, I, there's so much about the medieval form and the way they draw that I really, really like. So. Me too. And then here is, this is Saint. Anthony Mary Zachar Zachariah, Zachariah. So, I basically just completely pulled from this composition. It was so beautiful. Mm. Not much more needs to be said. <laughs> He's pointing toward Lord in the Eucharist. Yes. And here is a little bit of, of kind of the inspiration for the, the ship, Ecclesia. Yes. yes. So I took out the IHS and put Ecclesia in it because that fit with the with the meditations of right. the week we're on. Right. But I the liked bark, the bark of Peter. I liked this composition a lot. We are in the bark of Peter. And this is Elizabeth of Portugal. So it looks like Elizabeth of Hungary, doesn't it? Uh, well, there's, yeah. Well, there's... But um, anyway, this is where I got the fish. I thought it was really beautiful. The girls will like it. Beautiful stained glass. I do pull a lot from stained glass because the line works really um, well defined. Well defined. And that time period in art is a really, it's, it, it 
the styling is very similar to a lot of the styling that I like to do. Here's Our Lady and all the souls. Yes. This is yeah. statue. This is where it comes from. Yeah. And that we that needs to be us down there. We need to do all that we can to stay in her mantle. That's right. Don't fall out. What a beautiful statue. I'd love to have a statue like that in our house. We just like maybe I'll make a statue and put all of us in it someday. I'll carve one. <laughs> hey. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh wow. Yeah, that would be neat. And then here is this is from the mantle. So this is uh Christ. All right, right. Because you, because you, you did an image of them pulling the fish up in the Sunday, but then it was repeated and sort of telling the story of it. Yes, and it took this this composition. Lots of fish there. Lots of fish. Lots of fish. And then here is Christ pointing to himself and saying, "Come, mm -hmm. follow me." Well, can you imagine? I can't imagine that. What must it have been like to walk with him? You know, he, here he, he's a man, and right, but he's he's God. He's the, he, I just can't imagine what it'd be like to. Well, he calls each of us. A We still are we still going? It says it's still going. We just had the whole thing just kind of like broke on me. Well, and we we're almost near the very end. It still says live and a little more than an hour, which is making us one of our longer videos. But we're nearly we're nearly at the end. We're only a few more pictures left, and uh, I, we'll just keep going. I think we just had a technology glitch. I'm just going to keep on going. We probably only got a few minutes left, anyhow. So, this image right here. Yes. This is the be reconciled to your brother. Yes. Correct? Yes, and I couldn't find the image for the foreground. I don't know where I got that one from, but this is the the gifts being at the altar. Ah, lay your gifts at the altar and be reconciled, yeah. brother. Right. Very good. Let's see here. Where am so I? Gonna let you scroll. Ah, this is King David. Yes, with the harp. Although this with one, he has a beard, and I took the beard off because that didn't fit with the storyline I had. <laughs> <laughs> so. I did a young King David right. with Saul, but that's that's the statue. This is St. Pius the First, but I opted okay. not to do. This is more medieval style with no beard, and the other image I had found, he does have a beard, so I used the um, garment uh, structure from here. Very good. Looks like I said there's more images than I thought there was. There's quite a few. I'm sorry. <laughs> there's quite a few. But if your kids like well, art, this right, is... Right, yeah, so that's kind of why we broke this up into two pieces. For those of you... You know, who want to bow out before this, you may. But if your kids want to kind of walk through and see the images, you can stay along till the end. Well, if you so. do stay up till the end, there's a special new announcement, or there's something we should new have made that mention that, that at the we're, beginning. We're going to oh, well. share. So there's a planner coming. We'll show you bits. Of we'll show you preview. Very... So, oh, this is Saint uh, John Galbert, right? And here is here is the 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 I guess the image that comes from the actual story. Yes. Right. There's the so. crucifix right there. Good. Good. I would love to make stained glass someday. You know, you know, I guess I got to mention it. I realized we made a mistake. Right. Notice there's only one halo, but on our calendar, there's two. Both men have halos on the calendar. Oh, really? <laughs> Oops. We got to fix that next year. I well, don't know if the man. God willing, he became a saint. Yeah. But he's not supposed to have a halo. <laughs> so the, the man, yeah. Okay. Sorry so, about that. <laughs> that happens because of we, the uh, past. 
because of a project this size gets passed to different people. There's, so you, well, you know, cause she's working with her two sisters. This isn't just her. There's three people drawing this together basically. And so we're interesting still little. refining our process, how to do it properly. But right. here you go. Here's another picture of St. John Gilbert. Okay. This is also, yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I, I it, occasionally when I'm finding pictures, people will mislabel them, but right. this is the, uh, this is the two of them. And then pointing to our Lord on the crucifix. Ah, St. Louis and Zelima, Martin. Yes. Pray to them. Ask us to help raise our children to be saints yeah, too. We all, you know, we, we all, all families should pray to them and ask them for that. They have a thing or two that could help teach us about how to raise saints. And then here is the image composition that comes from David and Saul. When David commanded his men not to harm Saul, he only cut the hem of his cloak. And then when Saul left the cave, he confronted him. And he essentially to ask, say, stop persecuting me, please. You know, here you were in my power. I could have killed you, but I didn't. You're the king. And Saul felt shame and he stopped pursuing David for like a week. And then he went back after him again. This is a, an engraving style. So <laughs> that's the other thing I'll do research on. Oh, you're a visitor. All right. Oh, we'll keep wrapping. One, one, yeah. two, Like Christmas special. After we're done, I'm almost we're done. We're almost done. Just a little bit more. Uh, Do you want to, uh, yeah. <clears throat> you can sit with me if you'll be quiet. Otherwise, you'll have to go out. Do you want to sit with me? Or do I need you to keep it down for me? How about this? Once you've finished, I'll, I'll, well, I, I'll I can't really, dear, because I don't know these as like you do. That's St. Bonaventure. Oh, yeah. This is St. Bonaventure. Oh, Bonaventure. Although you can see, I see right. St. Francis, Francis is much, much uh, bigger in that one. But I apologize. I'll run through the rest of these the best I can. She knows these images far better than I do, so I'm going to just move a little quickly through them. Uh, but, yes, so uh, St. Bonaventure. And then we have here another of St. Bonaventure. Now, there's a story behind this. You can see some cardinals. I will probably just move quickly through the last. And this is St. Kateri Tegakwitha. This is a beautiful, this is a lovely little statue. This is where the composition came for the image. And here we have the St. Henry II. I believe, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember which country he was king of. Look him up. Read about him. Read about his life story. You can see in here, these are scenes you know, from his life having to do with, with Henry do you remember what uh, much about St. Henry? Um, no, and uh, he was a, a great king. I, I really do skim through the lives of these saints so quick. I can't wait till next year I can go over it more, in depth, more in depth. But yeah. um, okay, actually, I do know a little bit about St. Henry. <laughs> he's the patron saint. He's one of the patron saints of oblates, along with of uh, Benedict and oblates, along with um, oh, the other saint, um, female saint. Um, I don't remember her name, but anyway. He want. I'm pretty sure this this is uh, the same uh, Saint Henry. He wanted to become a monk, and he didn't want to be king. And so he went to the abbot, and he says, "Please let me be a monk." And the abbot says, "All right, as long as you will." Or he, he says, "He says, will you be obedient? Like whatever you ask. Yes, I'll I'll be obedient. Do whatever. I'll do whatever you say." And he says, "Okay, then go be king." <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that that's that's the saint. So very good. I didn't know something. Well, the could world could use more kings like that. Yes. He's a very good, noble king. And here's Our Lady Mount Carmel. Right? Yes. This is the, the brown scepter. Mm -hmm. You got the image for Our Lady Which I believe this is the anniversary of when Traditionis Custodis mm. came out. I'm pretty this sure. This day, which was uh, Ju July 16th. July 16th. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. If I got my dates right. Oh, Lord knows what's going on. Let's just stay faithful. and. Well, in the miracle of the sun, there was those, those different images that were shown. Um, and the last the last one, I believe, was was the image of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. So hmm. there's some, some mysterious connection mm -hmm. there. Yep. <coughs> and this is... So I have two images. I have this one here, which is... Sorry about that. This is a, a holy mark. holy card. I have two holy cards Um from the same artist. I don't know who the artist is, but this is God the Father with God the Son and the Holy Ghost. And there, it's just really interesting the way that God the Father's hands are up and then 
Jesus' arms are down, like 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 he's been taken down from the cross and he's dead. Almost like it reminds me of the of the um, the image of the sorrowful mother, like holding the Pieta. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, that that was really beautiful. Wow, the, there's definitely some. I, I wish we could. I want to see it without the water. I know. I'm there's sorry. There's something to meditate on there. I don't know why. There's something about the way that image is composed that does sort of. I can't. I can't put in the words, but there's something there, in the way the font, the way he's looking at us. Yeah, I almost considered using this in the calendar, but I opted not to because it was too. I feel like it wasn't. It was a. It would sort of dilute the particular focus of what that mantle and what was going on there. But I still thought this was really beautiful. So. Right. So there's another image of God the Father holding God's son. This is late medieval, like Renaissance almost. I'm not an art historian, but I'm just noticing. Okay, here's this is the sign of peace that um, mm. I pulled from. Pax Domini, Sit Semper, Vobiscu. This is the where I got the, the church from. Oh, the, the church that the monks are walking toward. It's, where, where it's, it's representing heaven, yeah. the kingdom of heaven. So, wow, a what a little lovely picture. little picture. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Wow. If you like looking at beautiful pictures like us, then <laughs> you'll enjoy this part. Yeah, this would be, I want to have this printed out just hanging on my home just to look at it. Like, what does it all mean? Yeah. I don't know exactly. I just knew the church was beautiful and I pulled it, but. What else going on in these different characters? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lovely. And here we have again the Trinity. Yep, this is where I pulled that. This from. okay, the composition of, of the Trinity in that church on that mantle. So you, go, you go look at that. So you could see all the different pieces I stole from to do the calendar. <laughs> this is not in the calendar, but I thought this was really Another interesting image. of the Another Trinity. Image of the Trinity, right? Notice how they all look they all look the same. I always thought this was kind of weird when I was a kid. Right. To right. see that. I think it's just trying to show that they're 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 so unified. Like they're right. Well, we've seen there's another there's an old Eastern icon of the three. And right. they all are, are young men looking the same as well. Yeah. So there's there's this image is trying to communicate a certain aspect right. of of who they are. Also see the throne. So I pulled the throne from this. Right. One. Okay. The throne. Yeah. Wow. But I'm trying to be very consistent consistent in the calendar to so always show Jesus the same way, mm -hmm. our Lord, and then to also show God the Father the same way. So that I wouldn't put this particular picture in the right. calendar because it's inconsistent. But there's an element here. I say you, you there's no image. You cannot image. The Trinity properly. You you gotta understand. You cannot draw an image of the Trinity at all. All these images, they're just trying to capture some teeny tiny sliver of a, of a piece to kind of give us something, some some bare thing to latch upon. But we can't formulate any one of these images as though it's an image of it. It's just speaking to a particular aspect. That's why I think it's good if you're going to have an image, you have to have a bunch of different images, and then you just sort of have to at some point put them away and just pray and ask God to, to reveal himself. It's these images do, they have they have value. There is something that they, they communicate. This is the the bridge. I just use like the bridge going in into the city. That's right. And this was the bridge that the two monks are going over yep. to go into, mm -hmm. you know, to heaven. It looks like a procession, like a medieval procession going across that bridge. Yep. And here is the feeding of the 5,000. Mm -hmm. Staying this window of our Lord. So I largely took from this, but I did right. add a little bit more imagery, added Peter and stuff. In there. So yeah, you, I think we mentioned this before, but part of what we love about this calendar project is it would not look good to actually pull these actual images and present them all together, all these different things. So the fact that Michaela is able to sort of take this and use it as an inspiration, as a template, and then produce something that everything does fit. It's got a, it has a unified style, but yet it's drawing upon you know, a thousand pieces from these different periods. So, St. Vincent de Paul. I couldn't find the one I used for St. Camillus. So, oh. and another this one is uh, St. Jerome Emiliani. Mm -hmm. right. That's right.
And this, I thought this was great. Nothing, this is uh, St. Lawrence of Brindisi, right? This is the Franciscan who led the charge in the battle with the crucifix. He led soldiers in the battle. Nothing will be difficult as long as there is a crucifix in my room. Oh, that we could, that we would live that way. So nothing will be difficult as long as there's a crucifix in my room. We should do quotes someday. Yeah. Like Here's quotes. another. I like this one. St. Lawrence and Ibrin D.C. Onward Christian soldier. <laughs> I really liked this one, but it didn't fit in the composition of the calendar. So right. I just put it in here so you all could see it. Hmm. And this is St. Mary Magdalene. So I used the the lower portion from this picture, but I didn't really care for her particular, like the face and stuff up of this one. Um, so I ended up using a different one. I don't know where the other one is, but you can see the styling is different uh, right. on the calendar. And then here <coughs> is St. Peter and St. Apollinaris on that mm -hmm. last day. Yep. Go, go to Ravenna, go preach the kingdom. So he did. I think, does that, we're not quite, okay, so here we see. These are the mantle images this, yeah. from this. I think so I the got. reading, the reading of that day, this is still the reading of the, five, the feeding of the 5,000. And so, and then the mantle images that, you know, show that as the prefigurement of the Eucharist. So that's our Lord giving the Eucharist to St. John. Well, I remember you and I talked about this, what I thought was one of the, one of the things to really get out of that mantle image is the hierarchy. Our Lord gives his body to the apostles. The apostles distribute to the other Christians, you know, and, our, and, and the priests give to us. There's this hierarchy proceeding down from Christ to the bishops, to the priests, and to us. Mm -hmm. Right? So that, that whole we're, aspect. We're trying to capture that. So, and this was the composition I used for the, the, the central image. part. Right. And then. This is St. John giving the Eucharist to our Blessed Mother. And uh, wow, yeah, because you had to realize. I mean, you know, after Christ's ascension, the, the Mass was practiced, and, yeah. and communion was given. So this, oh, that was a beautiful picture. I see, yeah. I see. I see. Can you imagine Our Lady receiving the body and blood of the Son whom she bore in her womb? I know. It's like amazing. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't even know where to begin there. And receiving, of course, from St. John, you know, because yes. on the cross our Lord gave gave her to St. John. So and then here, this is with the prophet Nathan accusing David. Yep. Isn't that right? This is David and his sin. This is for the Matins readings of that week. Yes. See, part of I think what's another good we need to become fluent again in being able to know and recognize the scriptures, to re to recognize these stories and to be able to have a fluency because I feel like part of understanding the depth of the faith is being able to recall these Old Testament, New Testament connections. It, it, it kind of clicks, but you have to sort of become familiar. And that's, of course, if you're if we're practicing the liturgy every year, even if we're missing lots of it, we're just every year you come back and you try again, you try again you eventually gain this fluency and then eventually you begin to really, you know, understand deeper things that, that passed you by before. So. You know what? I think this one's actually from the next calendar. I think I, this, this, this one's not from this calendar. I, Are we? I, oh, the, yeah, we're at the end though. This yeah, we're at the end. end. Okay. The Sorry, end. I should have removed that one. That one's Very good. <laughs> we can show Very them good. though the, um, Oh, one last thing for those of you who are still with us. Looks like we still may have a couple of this. One last thing. Uh, so I don't know if you know, uh, make, we're making a planner, a, a daily, a weekly planner using the images mm -hmm. uh, from the calendar. So here, you want to see what it looks like? Let me show you. Let me show you. I'll share the screen again. So Sophia is going to publish it. Uh, so this is the name we have for our fiat. And it's going to be. It's a weekly planner a weekly. with little thumbnail images. Of each of the days, the feast days from the calendar there with the. Uh, with quotes, with a few scripture readings. This is sort of like the week at a glance right mm -hmm. here. Then you have a, uh, what you got to talk this about. This is, well, and also I want to point out, so the sizing will be like an A5 size. A little it's, a little booklet, a little, little bit. Yeah, like this is my bullet journal here. Um, like, like it'll size. be about this size. Um, and it'll here, be. Here, go put that up again. 
Put that up again. I want to make it wanna, about this size. Sorry. No. This is Open just, it up. Is it okay? yeah. these are, I mean, this is just a bullet yeah. journal. Yeah. So this is mine. Um, but what this will have is it'll have a weekly spread with little thumbnails that correspond to the calendar. Um, and also having the markings for the rank of feast days. You can get that and also you need to know what yeah, it, It's days. not ex like, like on feria days, we're doing quotes um, just because of the, the imagery is a little more complicated for feria days. So it's we're trying to make it as simple as possible so it doesn't look cluttered. Um, we've asked a lot of people for their opinions and advice. Um, this is just a preview. So it's going to uh, it's got a little extra white space, the top and bottom that won't be there, but it will have all the monthly dedications interspersed throughout it. It'll have the weekly monthly spreads. And then we developed um, this special insert page that'll be between it'll, it'll basically be following each weekly spread. You go back to that one. This, this one. one, this is really unique. If you guys have any thoughts, let, let us know, give us feedback. But basically what we've done is things that we thought would be really useful that don't really fit on a weekly spread we put here. So this has like, you know, your top three goals for the week. It has a place to put a shopping list. If you, if you want a shopping list, it has to do's like little check boxes. It has habit tracker things to remember. And then the other side is just a, a grid, a dot grid. And this allows people that like maybe have certain school subjects they want to customize. Um, I use the grid a lot in my bullet journaling. Um, so this is just a flex space that's not cluttering up your weekly spread. Um, so we're kind of excited about this to see, um, how people like it. Um, but this will be coming out at the beginning of the liturgical year. Right, so well, actually, mean, no, earlier it'll be coming out, uh, it'll begin November. I think yeah, so the it, begin, first spread. it begins with, with the beginning. So Advent, mm -hmm. it begins with the liturgical year. Yeah. So it's a 14 month planner. And it will go all the way until, um, it'll go all the way through January. So it'll actually be more like a 14 month. Yeah, so it's a, it's a 14 yeah, yeah. month. Okay. Month. Sorry, I mean, so, we're done it. <laughs> very good. Well, for those of you who stick with us for this long, this is probably one of our longest videos, but yeah. I think I think the, the next few videos are going to be similar in length because there's just so much that Makeda's packed into these Pentecost calendars. Um, but you know, you're free, you, you can always watch them like one week at a time because we're going, we go through the calendar sequentially. So if it's too much to sit down and do it all at once with the kids, maybe pause it and then come back to that point when we're going, you know, as we go to that week. As the time goes on, we're hoping, you know, we, we want to find some other formats to help get the uh, knowledge, the information out there. But um, anyhow, we welcome feedback. Please send us any questions, comments you have. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for supporting our this work, this, the, to, you know, to enable my wife and, and her sisters to do this drawing. Yes. So and please, if you could, like, uh, like uh, subscribe on YouTube. helps our channel grow. And may God bless you. And until we see you again. All right. Hour and a half.